Hey. Hi there, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. This is the second time I'm filming this video because the first time I completely <laughs> ran out of daylight. So here I am on my day off. It's a lovely day outside and I'm inside filming a video. Oh, it's glamorous life. So you've got your plan of where you want to visit in Japan. You've got places like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, and you've got a certain budget that you're trying to stick within. And you might think, oh yeah, it's cool. I'll just catch the, catch the Shinkansen. It's just a train, surely it's not that expensive. And then you look up the price from Osaka to Tokyo one way on the Shinkansen, and you realize, oh, okay, it's a little bit more expensive than I was expecting. That was definitely me when I first came to Japan. A one-way ticket from Tokyo to Osaka on the Shinkansen, the bullet train, is about 130 US dollars. It's 13,000 Japanese yen. But, oh, why is the lighting changing? Don't do this to me. Anyway, here I am to present to you the next best option, or in my opinion, actually the better option. First, let's just get into how you can do it. The company that I usually travel with on a night bus is called Willa Express. They've got a website and the entire thing is in English. It's so easy to use the website and I can't recommend it enough. So on the website, you can just choose the place that you're going to leave from. So for example, let's say I'm choosing to leave from Tokyo and I wanna be going to Osaka. Choose the dates that you wanna to go to and then it'll come up with a whole bunch of options and how to travel there. Make sure that you check the time that the buses are leaving because they do have day buses on the same website as well as night buses you can also add that as one of the filter options if you just want to catch a night bus once you've selected your dates and everything it gives you a whole bunch of different options on which ones you want to take and each of them have their own leaving times their leaving locations and they've got the type of bus that you want to travel with I usually travel with I think it's called the Willa relax seat and it's just one step up from the economy and they are excellent so say for example you're going to be choosing to ride on the relax seat you can select that one and then on the next page, you can choose your exact pickup location. So when I was traveling to Fukui with Yoshi, which was months ago, <laughs> Yes, it really is taking me that long to make these videos. My bus was conveniently leaving from Disneyland, which is really nice. You can select to leave from Disneyland or wherever the bus may be leaving, and then which station you wanna get off at. So once you've selected your exact locations, you can just pay. You can pay online with a credit card. You can also pay at a convenience store. I think some convenience stores, they now have English options, so you can do that if you want to, but it's kind of confusing if you don't know how to do that. It may just be easier to pay online anyway, so I would recommend to go with that option. And once you've paid it, you'll be getting a confirmation email as well as your exact pickup location and the number bus stop and all that kind of thing it'll also send you a reminder a couple of days before your bus trip and that's it the online experience is so easy it's so simple to do and yeah I love it I love it. So as I said before, when I was traveling to Fukui, I left from Tokyo Disneyland. I went with the relax seat and these are what they looked like. They're actually quite long, if that makes sense. They're a little bit narrow. So for me, it was personally fine, but I think for some other people, they may have a, a bit of issues. I paid for, this is the first time I've ever done it. You can pay an extra 500 yen sometimes to get the, the last seat on the bus. I thought I'd just give it a go this one time and I can highly recommend it to everyone. You get like, like a tiny bit of extra room. I think the seat reclines a little bit more and you just get a bit more room in front of you as well. So you don't have to worry about the, the chair in front of you coming down. You've got a bit more space to put your things down next to you and it's away from all of the people. So I felt really, I felt very, cozy and secure in my little space. But the normal seats, of course, they're totally fine. So like I said, with this seat, it reclined, it bleh, it reclined quite a bit. So there's a little footrest, so you can put your feet on it. Um, I'm gonna fly in this room. And it also comes with a blanket on it, which is really nice. They've got a little adjustable neck pillow. They've got a little seat pocket, a little hanger, so you can hang up any like bag or jacket or anything like that. It also comes with a power outlet, which is really useful when you're charging your phone or your Wi-Fi or something like that. Oh my gosh! Perfect segue. If you are traveling and you'd like to get some Wi-Fi on the go, you can sign up with iVideo. Yeah, this is my, my pocket Wi-Fi. It's excellent, it's unlimited, super fast Wi-Fi. You can connect up to 10 people on one device and I love it and I've got a discount code, Hannah, for 10% off, 15% off. 
I think it's 10%. I'm gonna say 10% because then if it is 15, then it's just an added bonus. So if I say 15 and it's 10, then that's just a disappointment. So check out the link in the description below and you can get pocket Wi-Fi when you're traveling Japan and a bunch of other countries around the world. And let's continue. So the chair also comes with my favorite part about it. And that is this little hood that you pull over your face. And it's so great because you just feel so much like, like comfortable and secure and cozy in there and it's actually really quite comfortable i found that i've had some really good night's sleep on these buses i don't know maybe it's just because i i feel like i can sleep pretty much anywhere just we all have our gifts in life <laughs> So once the bus departs, it'll pick up everyone else from the other locations in that city, and then it will embark on the long stretch. When the bus is driving, every couple of hours, it's gonna stop at a service station. And this is so that the passengers can get off and you can use the bathroom, brush your teeth, you can go to a convenience store, buy things if you want to. But it's also for the drivers so that they can stop and take a rest. Also another thing to note, most of the buses have two drivers with them. Um, not all of them, but some of them do, which is nice and they can just switch over throughout the night in case someone's feeling tired or whatever, just a little bit of added safety. So usually the long stretch, it'll probably drive around, depends where you're going, but it'd probably drive around for about six hours. Um, at least to Osaka, it's about six or seven hours, like in the long stretch. And then when you get to your final location, just get off the bus, get your bag, and you're ready to explore. I find using the night bus, especially in Japan, to be a really, really excellent idea, especially for people on a budget or people on a really tight schedule. The number one main reason that I love using the night bus more than the Shinkansen, obviously, is the price. It's actually, it's about half the price than it would cost to catch the Shinkansen. Shinkansen, one way, Tokyo to Osaka is 13,000 yen. Or the night bus from Tokyo to Osaka, Osasha, wow, Osaka is about 6,000 yen. So it's less than half the price, less than half, more than half. Another great feature of the night bus is that not only is it your transport from one place to the other, but it also kind of pays for your accommodation that night. You're traveling overnight, so it's like a night of extra accommodation, which is good. The next big reason that I love catching the night bus is because it's so time efficient. Depends which ones you catch. It'll usually pick you up around 9 or 10 p.m., but that's the end of your day anyway. You wouldn't normally be doing anything then. You will get dropped off at the location at about 6 or 7 in the morning, sometimes 8 in the morning, which is a great time to start exploring for that day anyway. So you're just using your time really wisely, the time that you wouldn't normally be doing anything. Instead, you could be traveling to a new location. Another reason that it's super time efficient is that it picks you up from, so like for example, it picked me up from Tokyo Disneyland, which is where you may be in that day, and it dropped me off like right in the middle of the city in Fukui or you know in Osaka or wherever it is that you're going to be going to. It means you, there's no extra transit time. So the reasons that maybe some people don't like the night bus as much as the Shinkansen is number one, obviously some people may have trouble sleeping on the bus. Honestly, I'll say it's so completely different to trying to sleep on a plane, for example. Example. I'm terrible at sleeping on planes, but I have no issues sleeping on the night bus. So if you feel like you may not fit in the chairs very well, or you're not very good at sleeping if it's not completely flat, there are a bit more expensive buses that you can book instead. But again, that's another con. The more luxurious your bus gets, the closer to the Shinkansen price you'll get. So yeah, yeah it depends on the person, depends what your comfort maintenance, no, your comfort, I don't know, no, not that, whatever. And of course, the final negative point is that it takes longer, obviously, because it's a bus. Another thing to note is that I know that a lot of tourists, when they come to Japan, they'll get a JR Rail Pass. Short answer, yes, they're definitely worth it. If you're gonna be traveling quite a lot in Japan, it covers the cost of your Shinkansen tickets, which is really good. It's usually about $250 though, so you gotta figure out how far and how often you're gonna to wanna to be traveling to see if it's gonna be worth it. But if you're gonna be traveling a lot around Japan and you don't wanna be catching a night bus, then probably get a JR Rail Pass. They are excellent and I wish that I could get them, but I can't because I live in Japan, so. Yeah, just know that I'm jealous of you. If you are also convinced and you'd like to catch a night bus, here are just a couple of tips to help you with that. Number one is bring your toothbrush and your face wash and you know all of your like nightly routine things in order to get settled before you get on the bus. Make sure that you bring comfy clothes with you, particularly like warm clothes, just in case the air conditioner blasts a little bit more. I mean, it's not like it's not like Singapore cold aircon, but it's still quite cool air conditioning, I guess. And you get a little blanket, which is 
good, but yeah, just bring comfy clothes to wear. If you can organize having a shower before at your hotel or hostel or something like that, that would be good. If not, you can get these little wet wipes, especially if you're traveling in summer, these are a great thing. You can get these wet wipes and they're cooling wipes. They've got some kind of like menthol in it, which means that it like, it just, makes you feel like your entire body is like it's like an ice box it's so good another thing to make sure that you bring is an eye mask and headphones headphones head ear squishy things the things the squishy things that go in your ear and these are for very obvious reasons they just help you sleep a bit better and uh, yeah yeah that's those are my tips for if you're catching the night bus so i hope that these tips and this video has been informative to you if it has been let me know in the comments below um if you're traveling a trip to japan and you want to find a cheaper and easier way to travel around japan i will highly recommend night buses to you i think they're an excellent way to get around the country and hopefully it'll help you to see more of japan the beauty beautiful, beautiful country that it is. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff about Japan and travel tips and expat living abroad things, subscribe. And uh, I think that's everything. I think it is. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.